Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Sunday Night Video. This week I am covering the very strange story of the death of Police Constable William Ellison which happened at the Howden Dock area in 1886. I hope you will find it interesting. But before we begin, if you do enjoy this video then please give it a thumbs up and if you are new here or haven't already done so then do please consider subscribing to the channel to help support the content we create. Thank you. And I would also just like to add that I do record these stories live so I do sometimes make mistakes which I always try to rectify so I hope this does not spoil your enjoyment of the video. On a Monday night in early June of 1886, PC William Ellison was on duty at Howden. His normal route would take in part of Wilton Quay and most of Howden. He was expected to meet up with another PC at midnight, but William did not turn up. The alarm was raised and Sergeant Bell and an unnamed police officer searched the area until around 3am the following morning, but they were unable to find him. They then returned to the police station and Sergeant Bell asked PC Crisp to continue the search. And it was PC Crisp who suggested that Howden Dock should be searched and must point out that Howden Dock is also known sometimes as Northumberland Dock. And the body of PC Ellison was found at 11am on Tuesday morning. No one could understand why he'd been at the dock as it was not part of his beat. However, it was thought if he had seen a disturbance of any kind, then he would have been likely to go and investigate. But as with not knowing why he had not been down there, no one could understand how he had ended up in the water either. The inquest into the death of PC Ellison was held at the Black Bull Inn at Willington Quay before Coroner Lynn. Sergeant Bell said he had identified the body as being that of PC William Ellison who was 23 years old and stationed at Wilton Quay. He said he had gone on duty at 10pm on the Monday night and the last time that he had seen him had been as he left Tyne Street with Sergeant Harvey at around 10.15pm. He stated that PC Ellison's beat did not include the dock, it ended some five to 600 yards away. When asked, he said... If he himself had been on duty and seen anything improper at the docks, he would have investigated, and he felt that P.C. Ellison would have done the same. He could not think of any other reason why P.C. Ellison would have been at the docks. He stated that when P.C. Ellison had not shown up at midnight as expected, a search of the area had taken place. All of the streets they expected him to be on were searched, but no sight of him could be found. On returning to the police station, he had passed the search duties on to PC Crisp, and it had been his decision to drag the area of Howden Dock, and this was how the body of PC Ellison had been found. James Golightly said he lived at Brunton Street in Howden, or possibly better, Willington Quay, and had seen PC Ellison at exactly 10 minutes to 11 on the night he went missing. He was very clear about this as he said he had stopped to speak with him for a few minutes and as he was about to leave he had asked Pacey Ellison what time it was. He said he could not be sure what direction he had gone after this as he himself had gone down a passage in the street so did not see the police officer leave. He said when he spoke to him he seemed fine and well and they had not spoken about any issues in the area that night. Mary Dryden said she lived in Howden close to Howden Dock. She was at her doorway on the night in question looking for her, her uncle who was due home around 11.30pm. She said she saw PC Ellison heading down the street in the direction of the dock but halfway down he suddenly stopped and headed back up again. She said he was walking quite slowly and seemed to be deep in thought and after passing her door she said she lost sight of him and went inside a few moments later. She said she did not see anyone else in the street, but after she went inside and closed her door, she said she heard the voices of two men who passed by just a few moments after the police officer. She said she'd remained awake until her uncle finally returned home at around half past midnight. And when asked, she said she did not hear the sound of an argument in the street or even the sound of raised voices. She had not seen Pacey Ellison return back in the direction of the dock and she said that he did not seem to, behave in, to be behaving strangely when she had seen him the first time. 
Joseph Spencer said he was a seaman on board the SS Mazeppa, which was at Houghton Dock. He said on Monday night he had been the watchman on board the ship, and at around midnight he was sitting in the galley when four of the crew came on board. He said he then went to take his usual look around, and on walking along the ship on the dockside, he noticed a policeman's lantern on the dock. He went ashore taking his own lantern with him, and the policeman shouted out, Who's there? And he replied, It's the night watchman. He said he then spoke for a short while with P.C. Ellison, and he told him to keep a good lookout, and Joseph said that he would do that, and that he had already been told to do so earlier by the river police, and he said P.C. Ellison replied to this by saying, That's right, it's a very strange place. He continued by saying that P.C. Ellison had asked him if they had any foreign sailors on board his ship, to which he had replied no, and the policeman then told him that he had had trouble with a foreign sailor earlier that night in one of the public houses, though he did not explain what the trouble had been. He said after this, P.C. Ellison went off in the direction of the bottom of the dock, and he himself made to return to the ship. It was then that he heard someone else move on the dock and then cough. This surprised him as he had not seen anyone else there. He said he shone his lantern in the direction of the sound, and a man spoke, saying, Are you the night watchman? To which Joseph replied, Yes. And the man then walked away, and almost immediately afterwards he saw P.C. Ellison hurrying after him. Joseph described the man as being between 30 and 35 years old, around 5 foot 10, and wearing a coat and dark trousers with a cap on his head. He said some of the clothes looked worn and the man did not look like someone who he would have expected to see on the dock. He said he did not see him again after this, and a short time after this he heard what he thought was the faint sound of a whistle, but could not say where it came from. He stated that the men who came on board ship did not leave again until morning, and that he did not hear the sound of a disturbance on the dock at any time, nor did he hear the sound of someone falling into the water. He had been on the dock all, on the deck all night and had several times shone his light towards the dock and did not see anyone around. He ended by saying that the body that Sergeant Bell had identified earlier as being P.C. Ellison was the same man that he had seen that night on the dock. And when asked, he said that P.C. Ellison had been perfectly sober when he had spoken to him and seemed to be in a jolly mood. P.C. Crisp said that during his search he had looked around the area of Howden Dock and it was here that he had found the helmet, lamp and belt belonging to P.C. Ellison. These were all lying just a few yards away from the SS Mazeppa. The helmet was crushed as if it had been trodden on and the belt appeared to have been cut in two places and the lamp had fallen on the ground and cracked the glass. Because of where he found these items, he asked for the dock to be dragged, which was done immediately, and by 11am, the body of P.C. Ellison was found. P.C. Crisp stated that when found, he was fully dressed apart from the items found on the dock. He had his truncheon clasped in his hand as if he had been about to use it. The leather strap was still around his wrist. Inspector Crozier of War's End said he had examined the body of P.C. Ellison shortly after he had been found. His pockets contained two pocket knives, a watch, a bunch of keys and around two shillings in money. The watch, he said, had stopped at around ten past twelve. He said he was fully dressed in his uniform and that there were two cuts on his coat close to where his belt would have been and also another further up. No other marks on his clothing had been found and he said the boots worn by P.C. Ellison matched the marks on his helmet, as if he had stepped on it after it had fallen from his head. Mr. Guthrie, a watchmaker who was also one of the jurymen, examined the watch belonging to P.C. Ellison. He said it had not been fully wound, but it would have kept going for some time after midnight. He stated that a watch would stop around five minutes after it was placed in water. This, it seems, would suggest that P.C. Ellison had entered the water at around five minutes past midnight, assuming, of course, that the watch was shown the correct time and was not previously running fast or slow. Dr. Burden of Wilton Key said he had examined the body of P.C. Ellison and could only find a few marks on his face and body. There were a couple of marks on his face, one being a small bruise on the left forehead and a small mark on the left temple, both of which he believed had occurred at the time of death or just prior to death. 
There were several superficial marks, but none of these could resu have resulted in his death. And Dr. Burden said he had also performed the post-mortem on the body of P.C. Ellison, and he said that internally the organs were all healthy with no signs of disease, and that it was his professional opinion that death had been caused by drowning. The coroner then spoke to the jury, stating that this was all the evidence they had available to them. There was little point in him adjourning the inquest, as the evidence had covered as much as was possible. There was at present no information to suggest any person who may have attacked P.C. Ellison and any person who may have caused him to fall into the water. The jury retired for only a short time before returning a verdict of found drowned, but they added that as to how P.C. Ellison had got into the water, there was not sufficient evidence to show. The funeral of P.C. Ellison took place on June the 10th, 1886, at Churchbank Cemetery in Wall's End, which at the time was known simply as Wall's End Cemetery. The procession left the police station at Wilton Quay at 3pm, with the chief mourners being his father and two sisters. Many police officers followed the hearse and the streets were lined along the route, with members of the public paying their respects. It was said that a large crowd had also gathered at the cemetery itself, and great sympathy was shown to the family of P.C. Ellison. I did not find any evidence of a headstone for P.C. Ellison in Churchbank Cemetery. And this, it would seem, was the end of the case. No arrests were ever made, and no one was ever charged with causing the death of P.C. Ellison. It would sadly remain a mystery. I thought this was a very strange case. There did seem to be evidence of some kind of argument or fight that had taken place on the dockside, based on the evidence given that P.C. Ellison was holding his truncheon as if to defend himself, and also the mention of the knife marks on his clothing and that his belt had been cut. However, it seems that no suspects were ever found, and although some of the witnesses mentioned seeing other people in the area that night close to the police officer, none of them were ever identified or questioned. It would seem strange to me that a young man who was by all accounts fit, healthy and sober at the time would somehow simply manage to fall into the water and drown. Of course, he may have slipped or tripped, but this does not explain why his belt and clothing were cut or why he had his truncheon in his hand at the time. Was this possibly a case of the person who he had had trouble with in one of the public houses earlier that night following him or vice versa and when they met up again a fight took place and P.C. Ellison was hit on the head and fell into the water and drowned? This to me seems like the only explanation. But what do you think? Do you think this was a case of a fight taking place on the dockside and P.C. Ellison was attacked and pushed into the water, his attacker making his escape before anyone could see him? Or do you think there was any possible chance that he had simply stumbled and fallen into the water? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I do hope that you have found this very sad and tragic story interesting and I do thank you all very much for watching and I do hope to see you all again very soon.